Good morning. Welcome to episode 136 of Fibertown. This, um, yeah, it's the first podcast of the new year. Happy 2016. Happy New Year. It's actually the 7th today of January 2016. Um, it is St. Distaff's Day. So happy spinning in fiber arts. This is, I guess, the traditional time when um, medieval European women would get back to their spinning and other household duties after the 12 days of Christmas are over, which the last day was yesterday. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a kind of get back to your chores kind of day, but I'm quite happy to be doing my spinning on this very kind of gray January day. So yes, I'm glad you joined me for, um, for another episode and I have lots and lots to talk about and I just realized I forgot to get the prize that the winner of the Falcal is going to get. I want to announce who that is at any rate. It's over there, I'm just, I showed it a few episodes back so you'll have to use your imagination or go back and look and see what you won. So the Falcal has been amazing. And thank you for participating. Thank you for joining in the community sense that we had going in that thread, talking about your projects and um, talking about each other's projects. It was wonderful. There were around 950 entries, so thank you very much. The final winner, and I, I love that I was able to give prizes away almost every week. That is thanks to people who have donated prizes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is in part thanks to people who have donated um, uh, funds on the blog. Uh, and that helps with me shipping prizes out. That gets very pricey. Um, so thank you so much. If you would like to donate anything like that in the future, it's much appreciated. It is totally not expected. Um, but if you want to, it is at fibertown.blogspot.com. There is a donate button. I get small donations and they, they help immensely. Um, and that's fiber with an R-E. So the winner of the Sheepish Book, the Space Cadet Sparkly Sock Yarn, and the beautiful project bag with the Notions Pouch is number 185, who is Socky Knitter. And she lives in Kentucky. Congratulations! Get in touch with me. I'm thrilled for you. You're gonna love all your stuff. So, excellent. Now, I was thinking about cows for this coming year, and at least for the time being, I'd like to do something a bit different. I would still like to do a monthly, um, a monthly FO whip thread kind of thing. So, um, you can post anything you're working on in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be finished. But here's what I would like you to do. I'd like to, I've picked some words for the year. I like words a lot. And the word I've picked for this month, the rest of January, is the word cozy. So if you could please, um, at least when you post something that's a whip or an FO, tell the group how it relates to the word. So it's a bit of a themed knit along. Um, and it's really anything that you can come up with. No holds barred. There are no limits here other than the word cozy. Take it where you want to go with it. Um, so weaving is eligible. So let's make sewing eligible. Um, weaving, anything with yarn or thread. So including embroidery, cross stitch, because I've got stuff to show you in those categories today. Um, anything that evokes a co something about coziness and it, it can be related not just to um, not just to fiber arts but maybe it, the fiber arts remind you of something else a memory a food a, a recipe um, a place um, a sensation so I'd like to for you guys to sort of sort of delve into this coziness this month of January so I have a list of other words that I'm excited to explore with you guys so Go for it. Cozy us up. Okay, um, I want to say hello to two lovely people who um, introduced themselves in the introductions thread. If you want to join the Fiber Town Rav group, please join. Um, it's Fiber, Fiber Town. Hang on, I'm just double checking. Yes, Fiber Space Town Space Podcast. That's how you find the Rav group. If for some reason you have trouble finding it still, message me, Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and I will send you an invitation to the group. So you won't have to look. 
Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention that I'm Fibertown with an RE on Instagram. Okay, so hello to Crafty Kimmer, who is Kim from Southern California. Um, she likes the podcast. Yay, thank you. Um, listens on the way to work. And she likes Alice, too. And I gave Alice a kiss for you, so thank you very much. She says thank you. Then we have, oh my gosh, Wissau, okay, Wissau, Wissau Wizdraws, did you get that? Anyway, she's Wanda from Lake George, New York. She's excellent, sorry, <laughs> sorry Wanda, I can't say your avatar. Um, she's been knitting since 1968, she does not look like she's been knitting since 1968. Um, crocheting too, she prefers knitting, quilts and sews. Um, ooh, she's been weaving on her rigid heddle loom and spins and dies. Oh, she has grandkids. And um, Alice reminds her of her grandmother's Boston Bull Terrier um, that she used to have. You know, a lot of people of a certain generation tell me that, um, oh, I remember when Boston Terriers were, were really popular sort of, um, I guess, I don't want to say middle class dog, that's the wrong thing to say, but like a lot of people, they just used to kind of be a, a family dog, a very popular family dog that you'd see around neighborhoods or grandparents had them or grandparents grew up with them. So I don't know where she is today. Not in her bed over there. She's not with me. I'm thinking she's cozy in her crate. She does love her crate. She might come and say hi. Sometimes when she hears me talking to the computer, she, she runs over. Because she knows that sometimes there are cookies involved. But not today. Okay, so today I have FOs, works in progress, spinning, and acquisitions. So, I do have this finished object, which is off of my Shocked Cricut. It is a little, it is a little, it is a very pink woven scarf and I've just realized I haven't clipped off the ends. So I forgot the name of the dyer of the yarn, but the yarn was a gift from a fiber fairy godmother. And it was a gradient set, see those are the ends I still have to clip. It was a gradient set of six. So I warped the loom first with, um, smells really good too. Um, the lightest, then the medium, and then the dark. And I also um, wove it. I did the weft in a similar fashion. So down here you have the lighter. It's a bit wrinkled still. Trans, let me see if I can show you where it transitions. Right about there. Do you see that? Transitioning to the medium pink. And again, the warp is all gradient too. And then to starting the darker right there. So it's bamboo and cotton. It's about 50-50, more or less. And it's imperfect. Um, it's a great length. I, you know, I don't really plan out. I sort of, when I warp, I direct warp right onto the loom. Um, I don't use a warping board. And uh, so I know about the length I need to go for to get sort of a perfect scarf length for me. I tried to do a loose-ish beat, um, so a loose weave, so I didn't really pack the weft in, although I ended up messing up and packing the warp in in places. And I thought I had a nice tension on the warp and an even tension, I really did. But I still, as I wind onto the cloth beam, will get See that? So see the, the looseness there? Like right there. As I wind on the warp and reapply tension, I don't, you know, I wind the warp onto the cloth beam when it's not tensioned. I've tried both ways actually. But when I do eventually apply tension, I get this sort of certain warp threads will move. They'll shift and I get a waviness in the weave. Help me, weavers. One of you recommended a book that I'm going to get. Um, I think it's called Inventive Little Loom. Could be wrong. I will let you know. I'm going to get the Kindle version. I'm just running out of um, room on my craft shelf, my craft bookshelf. And uh, let me see if I can show you another example of what's happening when I do that. 
Anyway, I kind of wish I had, see that right there? Right there. I kind of wish I had packed the warp, the, the warp a little tighter. Um, for example, in this section, it, it ended up being a little tighter. And I was afraid that it would be, it wouldn't be as drapey, it would be more stiff if I didn't maintain sort of a weave, uh, can't talk today, um, a looser weave, but not at all, not at all. With the cotton and bamboo, it's very drapey. Anyway, you know, it, it's fine when you're wearing it. It's, it's, the colors are pretty great. I will say though, when I washed it, holy color bleeding. Wow. I don't know if it was the soak that I used and, you know, it was hotter water. It wasn't boiling, but anyway, the quest continues. So I will get that weaving book and see if it can teach me something new that will help me. Um, because so far, I keep making these same mistakes. Okay, I sewed a bag, a purse for myself. It can go crossbody. I got this very wonderful, very fine corduroy fabric at Finch Sewing Studio, which also sells yarn. It's an amazing place in Leesburg, Virginia. The building is, I, it, it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. The owner is fabulous. The people who work there are fabulous. They have lots of sewing classes, including classes for kids, and I love it. Now you might notice that my flowers are growing sideways because I can't think these things through apparently. I still love it. Like it would have been great if they had, I had put the print that way. Um, I've lined it with this, which I, ha I had left over from my husband's um, laptop bag that I made him. And it's just holds what I need, the basics, and it goes across my chest. Uh, the other, oh yes, the other FO I have is a cross stitch. I have to do one more thing to it, but I have finished Are You In The Beyond? Quote from Professor Trelawney. Pretty sure it's book two of Harry Potter. So what I need to do is finish it like I did this one. Um, just with a running stitch to gather up the back. Now you can do this fancier with cloth and so forth, but these are just going on my wall. Nobody's going to see behind them. So the quest for, I wonder which one I'm going to do next. For movie quotes, movie and book quotes. It's on. Um, I want to have a lot of these. In fact, I need to get more frames, more little hoops. Might have to go to Joanne's with my coupons. Um, it's a very fun. Do you guys have any good Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars geekery quotes for me? This is what we do at the dinner table. We come up with stuff like this. So now on to works in progress. Let me show you, oh my goodness, what shall I show you? How about this? And while I'm at it, I'm gonna show you some acquisitions. It's a bag I made as well. I got, I fell down again at Sucre Sucre Miniatures. And I got a little bowl of mac and cheese, as well as a cup of joe, a cup of coffee. So these are waiting to go on my next squares for my sock yarn blanket. Um, that's where that is, sorry. Finding one of my uh, work tools here. Um, that has to go somewhere else, let's see. Oh, and then an open pack of hot tamales, yum. Okay. This is a more than a third of the way done. I laid it out in my bed. It's I'm aiming for a queen size coverlet. And there are around 300 and keeping track on Instagram, <laughs> but there are over 300 squares now. Um, and it's hashtag FT square a day. So for my very first square of 2016, I have 
a giant rainbow. And this is the biggest square that I have done so far. It spans three squares, three small squares on each side. Previously, this was the biggest I had done with two squares on each side. So, starting 2016 off in a colorful, happy way. And this is sort of smack dab in the middle of the blanket. This is the White Birch Fiber Arts. And, um, yeah. I don't know how much I will be working on this for the time being. But, yeah, it's great to lay it out and see how far I've come and how far I have to go. So I've been working on this just over a year. I'll give it two more years and it should be good to go because I will need to be doing the I-cord, more of the I-cord um, border. I do have a little bit of it done already. See the, the black right there? So, excellent fun. That goes back in here. I have some socks going on, people. More than one pair. I know that might be a recipe for disaster. But the first one, I have the ball band this time, is Knitted Wit. Victory Sock October Sky. This is a lovely base. And it's one of my Holland Handmaid's bags. I love them. This is on US 1.5 DPNs. Um, that's 2.5 millimeters. I am starting my gusset. So there, it's just the, this is the blueberry waffle pattern. So it's a sort of a broken rib. And there's the back with no blueberry waffling. Um, heel flap, heel turn, and on down we go. So it's a short cuff. That's okay. I like short cuffs. I'm wearing some Rose City rollers today, and I love them. They're great little boot socks, too. Um, yes, so that is, those are for me. And I'm enjoying the yarn. The second pair of socks um, came about because my husband said, so when do you think I'll get another pair of socks? And he's already knitting himself something, so I, I refrain from saying knit them yourself. And I said, sure, let's go look in the stash. Let's go shop in the stash together, um, which is fun because we hardly ever get out together. So we just went to my stash and it was like a date. Um, yeah, we should have had a drink while we did it. I need to do that next time to make it officially a date. All right, so this is in my bird bag from my friend Megan. Isn't it beautiful? And this, this is deep stash, man. This is very deep stash. Mountain Colors. I think this was a, um, a D stash from someone that they just gave me. So this is the Gold Rush colorway. It's the barefoot base, and it has superwash wool, mohair, and nylon. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm blueberry waffling yet again. So I just, I've knit on this for about one day. So there's the beginning of the pattern. There's the back. Same needle size, but on Magic Loop. Um, Addy Sock Rockets. And here is the yarn. I'm trying to get better lighting, but it's, it's very hard to get accurate colors with, um, without natural light. So, yeah, it's, it's great. And he likes colorful. He likes color. He wears color. So I think these will suit him just fine. Um, 64 stitches um, for the leg. He's got skinny calves. Um, so I'm thinking 64 stitches will be fine. I may increase for the foot because his foot is a bit, is definitely wider. Um, then I think the standard 64 stitch would call for. All right, what else do I have? Okay, so I cast on, let me find a picture of this, the Caddy Wampus Hat by Elizabeth Green. And it's Elizabeth Green Musselman. And I want to show you a picture. I am just going with this because I trust the designer. I I've seen other people who have knit this. Silly Fru from the Sassy Pants Knitter podcast, she recently knit one. But the construction is wackadoo, which I like. It's all good. But still, I'm like, is this origami? I'm not good with visual spatial stuff. So it's kind of blowing my mind right now. All right, there's Elizabeth. 
and her cuteness. And there's the cattywampus hat. It's a paid for pattern. I've had it for a good while. And I just had um, some hand spun earmarked for it. And I just, was, I need something new to cast on. So I did. Here's the hat. You guys like it? You guys like it? That's my hat. <sighs> I think she says it eventually when the brim edges, uh, the brim edge measures a certain amount, then you, you can start finishing the hat. I think this is the brim edge but I'm not exactly sure. There is a provisional cast on. I did um, cast on with two colors um, with the provisional yarn, with the working yarn on the bottom. Is that how I did it? We just cast on right onto the needle. No crochet hook involved. Um, yeah, the, the yarn is super fun to play with. Let me show you um, what it's all about. It is an Inglenook Fibers, or it was a bat from Inglenook Fibers. There's Gandalf. Okay, the ingredients were Stansboro Grey, which is the New Zealand um, wool used for the Lord of the Rings costuming. Mohair Romney Bamboo, North Ronaldsy. You steal my heart, North Ronaldsy. Flax BFL, Welsh. I guess that's Welsh Mountain. I don't know. Starbright Nylon, Merino, Faux Cashmere, Silk, and Soy Silk. What more could you want? <laughs> it's lovely! And this back here is a bit more accurate. Right about there. There are grays and gray blues, and sometimes you get a bit of pop of tweedy red or gold. Lovely! So, you like my hat, y'all? I really don't know! I'm excited, though. So yeah, something happens eventually that makes it into a hat. This is in my, oh, uh, I'm using my marbles. These are US nines. And I thought of another good use for these. I keep thinking of pluses for these needles. Nobody would kick you off the plane with an acrylic needle, right? Hopefully they would not. So I think they'd be great for travel. Here, my hairs. Um, kind of rough today, the appearance wise. I'm wearing my bare branches because it's cozy. This is an Alana Dacos pattern. Dacos, Dacos. You know who I mean. Oh, oh, I wanted to tell you this is my patchwork Holland Handmaids bag from Erin. Adore, 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 adore. Okay, last, is this the last work in progress I'm gonna show you guys? No, <laughs> two more, but the last one is not knitted. I need a drink, excuse me. Drink, drink, drink. Alrighty, the Nanook in a bag that I sewed. Hang on, hang on, let's, let's primp a bit, shall we? Okay. Okay, hand spun. Cotswold Coopworth Lamb. Lovely, lovely three ply. Smells wonderful. Then I nook. You might remember last week. I had a boo boo. I ripped it that very day. I started to try to fix and I said, Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I was not going to be dropping down and fixing. 160 garter stitches. Nah, not gonna happen. So I'm back on track and yeah, there's the garter stitch front. Much better. Um, still a little weird in one spot, but I think once it's blocked, it's fine. So here it is. I'm just in the long slog now of white well, it's really ivory. It's a beautiful ivory color. Um, white stockinette slog. And you, you can see those gray spots. Those are spinning oil spots that got on the yarn as I was plying. So the Nanook is a Heidi Kiermeyer pattern. And I, you know, I'm playing around with gauge because it's hand spun. And I did end up doing 
lots more increases on the back because it was sort of tight around the back. Everything else seems to fit pretty well, but I tried it on, I put it on two long circulars, tried it on, and I'm like, yep, I think I increased like 20 more stitches over about an inch. So just on that part though. Sleeves are done, just needs, just needs some dedication. <laughs> then it'll be cozy. Maybe I should push the cozy with this this month and finish it. Um, these are Marvel's US 6s, which uh, is a four millimeter needle, interchangeables. What else can I tell you about it? Yeah. At least it's back on track. I can just pick it up. <sighs> but cardigans in back and forth. That's not the kind of cardigan that I don't think that you could do in the rounded steak because of the special fronts. And there's there there's got to be a way, but yeah, I think it's psychological with me, me and um, long like you know a foot and a half basically of stockinette back and forth is very puts me off, <laughs> and I don't pick up the work that much, so it just doesn't get done that fast. All right, so. The last work in progress I have today is in my stitching basket, my embroidery basket. I have taken some needles. This is from Sarah Pomegranate. She made me this. And I've threaded them with floss. They are ready to go for when I want to pick, pick this up and just go. This is a drop cloth sampler. I got this at Finch Sewing Studios too. You can find this on various um, Etsy shops and it's drops dropclothsamplers.com. Um this just comes with some instructions. This so it comes with this book and this cloth, which is printed. And I've started. I've done running stitch, back stitch, and which the chain stitch, which was super fun. There we go. Now I have these colors but I've already determined I need orange, pink, and turquoise. So, um, another reason I might need to go to Joann's today. I see a trip in my future. I think I do have good, a good coupon. So, there's a particular YouTuber I found who, her first name is Mary. Okay, sorry. Her first name is Mary, and um, she does great videos. Mary, last name starts with a C. Anyway, I watched her videos, um, did the stitch. It was fun, much more fun than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm looking forward to working more on this. Um, what did I want to say? Oh, so Rebecca Rinquist, I think, is behind these. And she has a creative bug class that people have talked about. I'm not taking it for now, but um, yeah, that's a lot of fun. All right, so spinning. I am still working on yogurt. Let me show you what I have so far. Um, these are my storage bobbins. I've been having fun with my bobbin winder. Um, each one of these holds an ounce. I'm doing a three ply. And uh, let's see. So, so far, this is, oh, sorry. So far, this is what I have spun. This, which has been swatched a little bit. This is already spun up as a three ply. Um, so three ounces, three, so eight ounces. Yeah, I have 12 ounces total. Now what I've done is I've written with a Sharpie. This was bobbin number one. This was bobbin number four. So for example, I will take bobbin number one with bobbin number, say eight is the last one I do. Um, or maybe bobbin number nine. And I will ply those two together maybe with a bobbin from the middle to get a more consistent yarn, hopefully. So this, the um, the swatch is, does not look like much right now. Um, it's a fairly thin yarn. It's a sport weight three ply. There we go. It's got a nice fuzzy halo. Yogurt is a beautiful... Um, Romney Corydale Border Lester Cross. Beautiful white fleece. Was rom was yogurt coated? I feel like yogurt was coated. It was very easy to clean. I do have 
have left quite a bit of lanolin in some of the processed fleece. I co I've combed 12 of the ounces I have of yogurt. There's more to him than that, but I think I really would enjoy this knit. Um, I tried it double stranded up here. I think I, I'm going to enjoy this knit at a loose gauge, maybe on US sixes or sevens and sort of have a drapey cardigan. Now we just talked about how much I don't like cardigans knit flat. But I would love like a Hannah Fettig type cardigan. I wear the breezy cardigan all the time and I'm going to dye this gray, like a silvery gray. Really think that would be a workhorse sweater for me. But how could I do, Think. let's think about this. I want to do something with extra fabric in the front. Could I just do increases and just do a steak up the middle? I kind of want to design my own sweater, something that will work for me. And I want it to be in the knit in the round. Stockinette, plain, but sort of a ballet wrap where you can, like the breezy cardigan, sort of. So much thought needs to be put into this, or you know, maybe I just won't think. Maybe I'll just cast on and go. I don't know. So um, that's it for spinning for now. I really want to get that spun up. I have almost one more ounce done. So that's, so I have like three or four more after that. <sighs> um, so acquisitions. This is the first acquisition I want to show you, although it is not a recent acquisition. Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, yeah. I have a friend, Suzanne. Um, she has taught both my children and we have worked together and she's a lovely human being, one of the best. And uh, she now lives far away, but she had, sorry, the hair has been messed up by throwing on that pseudo hat. She lives far away, but before she left and cleaned out her house for retirement, she gave me a lot of handmade items that were made by her French grandmother, including these, which I believe are tatted. I would love to somehow incorporate these into a sewn item. There are maybe, maybe 10. Oh, look at that, that one's got staining on it. Looks like something, like a drink was set on it at some point. I would have to try to use one of those. Um, maybe I would try a gentle cleaning solution. I know that they sell cleaning solutions for antique textiles. I've seen them at yarn stores before. Anyway, the ones on the top are in great shape. I also have a lot of crochet doilies, doilies from my, my granny Esther Bell of the shawl. So kind of thinking about doing something with these um, vintagey textiles. Somehow putting them in a sewn project, um, be it a bag or a shirt. If I could clean these, they would make a beautiful border of a top or a hem. So they will go back in the Saks Fifth Avenue box for now. And uh, yeah, I'll think about it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done any, you know, incorporating vintage textiles into um, something more modern. I'd love to know. I also have a big crocheted shawl um, from Esther Bell that I still wrap up in occasionally. It's got a lot of fringe and it's, like, it's a worsted weight. It's very warm. I feel like it has more wool content in it than most of her 1960s and 70s projects do and 80s, um, which there was a lot of acrylic. So, But I do, I do treasure having those still. All right, um, a few more acquisitions and then we're gonna say goodbye. I showed you the stitch markers. Okay, I have acquired this book. 
in the footsteps of sheep. Tales of a Journey Through Scotland, Walking, Spinning, and Knitting Socks by Debbie Zawinski. Now, this is Debbie Zawinski. And she's badass. So, I did not know what to expect. But, this is pretty much what the book is. It's like, it's an account. It's full of pictures, but it's really a lot of text journal-ish about what she sees, what she does, what she knits, where she stays. She talks about, I think there are 12 Scottish sheep breeds. She finds, she does wool gathering as she walks. Sometimes she's with her family, but mostly she's alone pitching a tent. I've read the first um, chapter and she's remarkable. And I think I'm going to spend some time on the couch, under a blanket, reading some of this today. Um, the, one of the other acquisitions I got, let me see where I put the other little thing. Uh-oh. Shoot. Oh, I forgot to show you that too. Huh. Okay. Let me show you one part of this. This was a very unexpected package from a very sweet friend. Look at that. This is from Claire of New Hampshire Knits, and <laughs> I still can't get over this. She sewed with this Tweety bit. It looks handwoven. Look at that. And then a Tweety embroidered sheep on there. Look at that. And it holds a composition book. I love journals. I love notebooks. I use a lot of them. And uh, oh, and it's got this beautiful floral fabric on the inside. I'm, I'm in love with it. It feels good. I love the Tweety feel. She also sent a really beautiful sheepy coaster and I must be using it somewhere. I thought I brought it, but I don't have it. But thank you so much. Okay. <sighs> Two more things in acquisitions, but I did forget to show you one other thing in works in progress. So I sewed together a bunch of my barn racing squares and I mattress stitched, which is not easy over all these squares. So it's a little bit bubbly um, still, so I need to work on smoothing it out. But here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I can make this work over this pillow. I'm just going to stitch this together and have this for my craft room. And I have enough squares to do one other. So that's on the way. I did a lot of mattress stitching over a day or two and then I got tired of it. So um, it'll get picked up again. And I do have this blanket in my, or blanket, cushion in my craft room. I think this was the last thing I crocheted that was not a dog blanket. And I did it with um, one of those county rain effect garns. And yeah, it's kind of felt it from me sitting on it, but I love it. So I'd love to have another handmade cushion in my crafty area. So two other things to show you, and they both have to do with the store Looped Yarn Works in DC in DuPont Circle. So I, I spend, oh, at least two Wednesday lunch times there a month. Um, I go pick up my daughter from school sometimes early on Wednesdays. Um, they get out early. And uh, yeah, I love this yarn store. I love it. It's full of really wonderful regulars. They're, you you always see the same faces there hanging out and knitting. And they're just, they're really, they're interesting people. They're welcoming. They're kind. They're funny. So I love hanging out there. And, um, you know, there was a big box of chocolates there yesterday. And there are all types of people. And it's packed to the rafters with wonderful yarn. Um, like a second story DuPont Circle townhouse railroad apartment. That's the store. Um, and the owners are wonderful. I know one of them a bit, Susan, 
she's lovely, and she said to me, have you seen our new yarn? And they have this milled for them. So Looped Yarn Works, this is their DuPont Circle DK, and it is 60 Merino, 60 Romney. So cool. Um, it's a, you know, 10 stitches, no, sorry, sorry. Um, US 5 to 7 needles, 18 to 20 stu 22 stitches for 4 inches. So, hand dyed. I got a lovely green. It's just a good, solid, two-ply yarn. I really love it. So, I got a skein to try. Um, so make an excellent hat. So, be thinking about what to do with that. Now, I, I don't usually buy a ton of yarn there just because I'm there often and I want to buy something every time I go. So what I have been doing over the past year and a half is buying unicorn tails. And I wanted to show you guys. I am three skeins away from having every single color of unicorn tail. I know. I haven't showed you. In general, I haven't shown my unicorn tail acquisitions for a long time. I just have them in this big jar with uh, buttons. They're just, they're just so fun. So last time I picked up Big Sur and I think Firewood. I don't know if that's Firewood. But yeah, I don't, I'm gonna have to space it out now. I only have three more to buy. And I often buy little notions and whatnot there, needles, but this has been a lot of fun to have on my table. So it's getting over full, so I need to find a different way to display them for a while. I'd like to sort of maybe coil them up into a spiral somehow and enjoy them that way. So, yeah. That's it for episode 136. Yes, there has been no Alice today. I'm sorry for those of you who kind of who look forward to that. Um, but yeah, girls got to take a nap. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys put in the, um, the Cozy Cal for January and what you say about it. And um, yeah, just looking forward to sharing that with you guys. So until next time, y'all take care.